Howdy folks, Mr. Dell here. We are uh, going to look at um, operations with fractions. So this is a uh, problem with the problem sets here that I'm pulling from CPMs course three. And uh, this is actually out of section 9.2.5. Review preview number nine, 132. So we've got multiplication of fractions. We have some exponents to deal with. We have negative uh, numbers. We have subtraction to deal with. So this is a little review here, some addition. So we'll take each one and uh, work through them. So when we're dealing with multiplication of fractions, um, <clears throat> and one of or either of them are mixed numbers where you have the whole number plus the fraction, um, you're better off putting that as a single fraction before you multiply. Because multiplying it uh, other way would be, you could still do it. It would be using kind of a, the idea of distributive property. It'd be seven fourths times the three plus seven fourths times the one fifth. So it tends to just be, um, cleaner to just take that and first move it, make it a single fraction. Right. And so to do that, remember there's three of these three holes. So that's 15 fifths, right? So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 fifths plus the 1 is 16. So it makes that 16 fifths. Now we can go 16 fifths times 7 fourths. And this is where the multiplication comes into play. Now, one, one of the other things, too, I want to point out is before I multiply, I tend to look to see if there's any simplifying I could do prior, dividing out any giant ones. Remember, you can divide out giant ones uh, in a fraction top and bottom or even in a fraction where you have two fractions because really what's on top is that 16 and on bottom over here is the four, but they're still top and bottom. So I'm going to divide out a four. If I divide a four, a, a giant one of four, really what I'm doing is dividing out that four before I multiply. So that four becomes a one and that 16 becomes a four. And so that just makes it nicer numbers when I'm multiplying and possibly already simplified. So four times seven, is 28. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is 5. Okay? So I, I multiply straight across with fractions. You could have just done that. I could have gone 16 times 7 and 5 times 4, but then I would have had to simplify um, here in this step. So I simplified prior to multiplication. Okay? Uh, that's a single fraction. You could make it a mixed number if you wanted to, but that, that answer would be suffice. If I was going to make it a mixed number, how do I do that? 5 goes into 28 5 times with a remainder of 3. So that would be 5 and 3 fifths. So that's also the answer in, in as a mixed number. Okay, so there we go. Now let's keep going. So I got some multiplication here. Prior to multiplying this, we need to do the ex, deal with the exponent, right? So 5 to the third means 5 times 5 times 5. Right, so that means that's 125, and if I'm taking a whole number and multiplying it by a fraction, I always put that whole number over 1, make it into a fraction, so I can see what I'm dealing with, So now, and, and, know, and know how to multiply straight across, right? So now we have negative 4 fifths over here. So, first of all, I know I've got a negative, a positive times a negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative, so I'll establish that. And then before I multiply straight across, I'm going to look to see if there's any giant ones I can divide out. And sure enough, I can divide out a five, right? I can divide out a five on the denominator over here and a five on the numerator over here. So five divided by five becomes one. 25 divided by five becomes, or excuse me, 125 divided by five becomes 25. So now I've got negative 25 times four, uh, which is 100 over one, right? Neg and then because one times one is one, so really, the answer could just be negative 100. Right. Keep going. So one, same similar situation. Deal with the exponents. 2 to the 4th. Remember, 2 to the 4th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And I'll put that over 1. 16 times 5 eighths. And again, I can divide out my giant 1 now. Well, let me show you if I don't do that. If I don't do that, I have 16 times 5, which is, uh, let's see, that's 80 over 8. Oops. 
it's just 80 over 8, because 16 times 5 is 80, 1 times 8 is 8. And so I still would have to simplify this. And in fact, I can see this is 80 divided by when you have a fraction. That, that bar also means division. 80 divided by 8, so I can see that as 10. All right. All right, let's keep, keep rolling. Here we've got a negative 1 half times, once again, I've got 3 to the second, which means 3 times 3, so it's 9. Put that over 1. This one, I don't see any cross-reducing I could do uh, or simplifying. No dividing out giant ones, so I just multiply straight across. So I have 9 halves, but it's a negative times a positive, so it's a negative 9 halves. All right, now, that was all the multiplication of fractions. Let's look at some addition and subtraction. So here I've got addition of fractions, but before I decide what I need to do with my denominators to add those fractions, I've got to deal with this exponent first. So exponents come before addition in order of operations. So this is negative 5 6 plus, so 1 half squared. What does that mean? That means 1 half times 1 half. So 1 half, I'll do it up here, times 1 half, multiplying fractions, multiply straight across, becomes 1 fourth. So now I have negative 5 6 plus 1 fourth. In order to add those, you have to have a common denominator, right? You can't add fractions with unlike denominators without, yeah, you've got to get them to be, you, you, you can add them, but you have to have common denominator first to do that. So what would be my denominator? I think I'm going to want to convert each of those to be 12, right? I can, I can get 6 to be a 12. I can get 4 to be a 12 by multiplying by two different giant ones. The giant one here I'm going to multiply by is 2 over 2, right? I'm multiplying 2 over 2, so that becomes 10 over 12. The giant one here I'm going to multiply is 3 over 3, because 4 times 3 is 12, so this 1 times 3 is 3. So now I have, keep in mind, this is still a negative, right? Don't forget to carry your negatives over. Negative 10 twelfths plus positive 3 twelfths. Now that I have the common denominator, I can tell, I know my answer is going to be a 12 in the bottom. And then I have negative 10 plus 3. So opposite signs, you subtract the numbers. There's cancellation. 10 negatives, 3 positives makes final of negative 7 negatives. So we have negative 7 twelfths as our answer for E. Okay. F. Uh, we have subtraction, but I have, a, I have to deal with the squared first. Right? What does that mean? That means negative four fifths times negative four fifths. So if I multiply that straight across, that's sixteen twenty fifths, and it's a negative times negative, so it becomes a positive. So that's nice. I like that. So sixteen twenty fifths. Now it's sixteen twenty fifths minus three fiftieths. Okay. So can't subtract those yet because I it's a, to subtract fractions got to have a common denominator. I do notice that twenty five does go into fifty twice. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by a giant one of 2 over 2 to get the denominators to be the same. So that becomes 32 over 50 minus 3 over 50. Now that I have my common denominator, I can subtract the numerators, subtract those the parts, and we get 29 fiftieths. Okay? All right, almost there. G. Ooh, this one you've got. I've got... I've got a square. I've got to take that to the second power and this one to the second power, right? So this is 3 tenths times 3 tenths. So that becomes 9 one hundredths minus, this is negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths. So that becomes a positive. I still have the minus there, but this one becomes a positive and 4 twenty fifths when I square each of those. And then I'm looking to get a common denominator in order to subtract them. So if I look, I can see the giant one here of 4 over 4 will give me that denominator to be 100. So that becomes now 9 one hundredths minus 16 one hundredths. Well, when you're subtracting fractions and you have that common denominator, the denominator is, is, is the same, but 9 minus 16, right? 9 minus 16, that's a small minus a big. We're actually hopping into the negative world. So that becomes a negative 7. So it's negative 7 one hundredths. All right, last one. I see a few operations on this one. This one, I've got some exponents. i got some multiplication and subtraction. So I deal with the exponents first. 8 squared is 64. Now I deal with the multiplication, right? 
So to multiply those, remember you're putting that 64 over 1 times negative 7 over 8. So I can see I can actually divide out a giant 1 before I multiply because I can divide out an 8 on the top and the bottom. That's your giant 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 64 divided by 8 is 8. So now if I multiply those, look, I've got 1s in the denominator, so I'm really just going to have 8 times negative 7, which is negative 56. So now I've got this negative 56, and I'm subtracting from it 1 half. Okay, so that's what I had left. So I deal, dealt with the squared. Let me review here. Dealt with the squared. Then the multiplication, right? That number in front, when you, that parentheses helps us see we're multiplying those things. So I dealt with the squared, the exponent, multiplied, ended up with negative 56. Now I still have to subtract 1 half. Well, <clears throat> I have a whole number, negative, a negative number minus a positive. It's just getting more negative, right? You can rewrite it and say this is negative 56 plus negative 1 half. You can add the opposite and see, oh, well, now if I have negative 56 plus a negative 1 half, that just gives me the answer. I'm negative 56 and a half. Right? There we go.